everyone, it's me again. <laughs> Are you tired of me yet? Today is Friday. Happy Friday. I was thinking, I was listening to the radio this morning and someone said it's like Friday isn't even that exciting anymore because we're not, you know, off work and stuff. But actually John has been working, so he likes Fridays. Okay, so today I actually have a lot of stuff to show you, even though I did those videos the past couple of days. Um, yesterday I got this in the mail in this little nice package from Beautylish. And I haven't used it yet, but I just wanted to mention the Good Molecules. Okay, let me back up and tell you what this is. This is the Good Molecules Pure Cold Pressed Rose Hip Seed Oil, antioxidant rich facial oil that delivers natural vitamin A and helps restore skin elasticity. elasticity. And let's see, I wanted to read this because this kind of sums it up in a nutshell, this brand. Oftentimes, lower prices come at the expense of those who cannot stand up for themselves, farmers, workers, and the environment, but it doesn't have to be that way. At Good Molecules, we prefer to directly source our ingredients. This eliminates markup from the middleman. It also lets us make sure ingredients come from a place in which all parties are treated with respect. The end result is lower pricing for our customers and peace of mind from ethical sourcing. Your gain isn't their loss. I'd like to share our pure rose hip seed oil handpicked by farmers in Patagonia, Austral of Chile, and cold press to ensure the highest quality for radiant skin. So, and it's of course never tested on animals or anything, but this line is so good. I love their makeup remover balm, and there is a glycolic serum that I have been using that I like, and if you are someone who likes the concept of like the ordinary or things that are just good ingredients, not a lot of fluff, you know, not a lot of crazy packaging or anything that I think you would really like this line. And of course, I will tell you how I like this. I'm thinking this might be something good for like the gua sha and stuff like that. Brooke was just fussing at me the other day for not using that. She was using hers while she was talking to me. And I'm gonna share this with her. Just give this line a glance on Beautylish and see if there's anything you might want to try. I think the pricing is good and I've been impressed with everything. Okay, so like I told you, I did get my other box from Sephora and I paid for the expedited shipping just because I wanted to be able to get my things and try them for you guys before the sale was over. And so that is how I've gotten my thing so fast, but I do know, you're sassy. I do know that the shipping is taking a little bit longer just because of the sale. So I used, I think I used almost everything and a few other things today when I did my makeup. I normally like to try things with you guys, but in some cases I think it's better so that when I show you, I can give you my opinion. Okay, this is something the, Bumble and Bumble Thickening Spray preps hair for lush blow dries. I don't know, I feel like I probably have tried this in the past because I feel like I've tried everything. And before I took my extensions out, I was not looking at things to make my hair thicker or have more body because I already had that with the extensions. But now that I don't have any in, I thought I would give this a try. Erin Busby, Busby Style, her channel, she did a hair video and she mentioned it. And when I went on the Sephora site, it got so many good reviews. There's actually a small bottle you can try and everybody just was so going on and on about it that I went ahead and bought the big one. And I just showed it to Brooke and she said, yeah, that's supposed to be good. So from her experience at Ulta. And uh, so I'm looking forward to trying this. I will try it probably tonight or tomorrow night whenever I wash my hair next. So looking forward to that. This is something, it doesn't get that good of reviews, but it got a really good review from Tammy, from um, Tammy's Ageless Beauty. And it is the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Primer, Base Perfection. Okay. This is more like for creating like a smooth canvas and um, it doesn't, it doesn't feel silicone-y. It almost feels, I was trying to think of what it feels like to me. Almost like a gel, but it does smooth out your skin. I do think if you're, the, if the reason you are using primer is to smooth out your skin and create a good canvas for makeup application, I think that you will really like this. And 
somewhat, you know what it reminds me of? I'm thinking it might remind me a little bit of the Sicily double tensor. So I will have to maybe do one on one side of my face and one on the other one day and compare them. It has a really good dry down and smoothing. Hmm, that is interesting. That's what it reminds me of. So I just put it on today for the first time. I do think that it really, you know, made my makeup go on really well. I'm using the Guerlain foundation. And so I'll let you know how that goes, but so far so good. But maybe by the time I load this video, I can put a note beside it if it seemed to hold my makeup on today because I am going out. I have to go to Walmart. My mom has sent me a list of things they need, <coughs> excuse me, and I need some things. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull things out. Okay, these are two concealers that I purchased after I was watching everyone else's Sephora picks. One is the Luminous Silk Multipurpose Glow Concealer in number five. Tammy showed this one, and so I got it, and color could not be any better. And then the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Concealer, and this shade is L6. And I had a hard time getting it here. And I used this on this side, and I used this on this side. And I'll be honest with you, they were just basically, I think, this one has a little bit more of a yellow tone than the Armani, and the Pat McGrath definitely had more coverage. And I was going to leave them and not put any powder over them, but they were creasing so bad that I ended up putting a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury Number no. Two pressed powder over them. But I don't, so I don't know if you'll be able to tell a difference or not. So I can't really say. I seem to like them both. So I would say if you don't need that much coverage, I mean, it's not crazy coverage like the Jouer or All Nighter or something like that. It's, or even Tarte Shape Tape. This I would, con I would say is a little bit more like the Hourglass, just a good solid medium to full coverage. And then this I would say is a good solid medium, but really pretty. So I think both of them are really good. It just depends on what you're looking for. If you are worried about your under eyes getting dry and you have dry skin, then I would probably say, say go for the Luminous Silk, but both of them are really good. Probably tell, I went ahead and played with this Charlotte Tilbury Luxury Palette in Mesmerizing Maroon. And so I tried my best. This is so against, I mean, I really, I looked at this palette and I was like, what am I gonna do? because they all just looked scary to me. So what I did is I started out with MAC Soft Brown in the crease so that I at least felt like I had a frame and a base to start with. And then I started with this color just on the outer V. And then I did this color on the lid. I don't know if you can see. So it's got a little bit of that sparkle on the, on the lid. And then I did this color along the lash line and a little bit into the outer V crease. But the main, I would say the main color you're probably seeing is this one right here. And then of course I used that on the inner corner and a little bit, whatever was left on my brush on the brow bone. And it's beautiful. Now I feel like not me. I feel like it's out of my comfort zone but you guys let me know what you think. I do like it. It just makes me feel, and this is the worst word I could ever use, but I feel like it's more of a grungy, dirty look. I usually prefer more of that, like I did yesterday with the topes and everything, but I know that there is, you know, a time for both. I mean, this would be great if you were like going out at night or going out with your friends or something because it's so much more of a statement where the Topes and the Tom Ford palette is so much more of an everyday. Just, it's almost like those blend in so well, you don't even really notice that there's eyeshadow. So let me know what you think, but a couple of you had asked me, oh, and I did use this too. I used the dark across the top lash line, and I did do a little bit of a wing just with a brown, the Benefit Brown, um, 
goodness, you know, the Benefit winged liner. I can't even think about what it is now. But so I used this only on the top, and then I used this on the waterline, which is a lighter color, and it has more of that sparkle. The top one is matte. The, this is really nice. This would probably give you, if you just wanted to dip your toe into these colors, this would probably do it for you because you could do this metallic across the top real thick and then do that matte color over it and then just a, a matte, you know, what color would I say would be? Hmm, like Mac Sable or something you could do in your crease and it would give you just a little bit of this. But so far, I do like this, and that leads into something I wasn't impressed with that I got. And I feel like I've gotten this before and I didn't like it, or maybe I thought about it, but I bought the Pro Filter Amplifying Eye Primer from Fenty. It's the Invisi Pink, and I, I didn't think it looked that great when I put it on. I put it on and it does it does smooth out and it does feel smooth. Of course, I just put it, let me put it where it's not on that primer. So it does, you know, it definitely smooths out. It has like a silicone-y type feeling, but it didn't really, I don't know, I felt like it didn't look that pretty on its own and Gosh, this, it, I don't know if this is a fair judgment because I used that palette, but I felt like my eyeshadows were kind of sticking to right where I put them and I was having a harder time at blending them out, you know, further out and further in. But it could be because those eyeshadows were different and a little bit more of a sparkly, you know, formula than I'm used to. So let me try this again and let you know. But or if you have tried it, you let me know down below what you think of it. This is so funny. I bought this precious little hourglass ambient bronzer, and when I opened it up, I thought, oh my goodness, this isn't half as shimmery as my other one. I'm gonna love this. And I realized I had ordered, instead of lumin luminous bronze light, I, I ordered diffused bronze light which is more of that yellow background. And I think I did that because I think the other one was out of stock, but I used this today along with the Lawless bronzer, which was gorgeous. It was not as pigmented as you would think. It looked so dark, but it went on really pretty, not crazy dark. It was just really, really pretty. So I'll use that in a get ready with me. And then I used a little bit of this too and um, it was really, really pretty. So if you want one of these that's not so shimmery, then this one would be a good one. But is this not the cutest little thing? It is just so cute. The only thing I didn't use today, because I felt like it might be over the top, is this is one of those Unreal Hourglass High Shine Volumizing Lip Gloss. And I have the one, I think it's in pink. I think it might be called Fortune something like that, and Tammy has told me about this one, and I just felt like it was gonna be too much color and too peach for me, and the color is solar, but she was wearing it the other day, and it just looked so pretty. Since I was getting the sale price, I went ahead and ordered it, so let's, oh my gosh, it's so pretty. It reminds me so much of that old gloss that we used to wear, Trendsetter, just beautiful. Okay, let me, um, let me get a napkin and blot this and we'll try it on. I had on the lipstick that I showed you yesterday, the Grande lipstick. And then when I went to order some more colors, I realized the color I showed you was sold out and there wasn't as many different shades as I had remembered. But they also sell on Amazon. And so I, this color that I was wearing, the all natural was still available and they had the other color. So I ordered the, I think I ordered the other like nudie tone that has a little bit more color than this. And I ordered the mauve, I believe. So we'll see how those go. But today I started out with, it was too dark. I started out with Estee Lauder Mocha lip liner. It was too dark. So I fixed it by going over the lip liner with Ballet Pink from Bobbi Brown. And then I put on the All Natural, and then I found, 
my, oh, I already put it up, but I found my Buxom Celeste out here. I don't know why I didn't see it yesterday. So that's what I had on. And um, let me, let me blot it again. So, and then let's put this on. That is so pretty. So it is definitely not to, let me get a little bit more. I don't think it's too orange at all. I think it looks really good with this eye too. I was scared it would be too much. So thank you, Tammy, for so many good suggestions. And I think that you guys, even if you got the cream, I think you would love these glosses. They're really good. Okay, the last thing from my Sephora order is the, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce that. I would say Taka, but I'm sure I'm saying it wrong. Simone Eau de Parfum. And this came up when I was looking up fruity fragrances and it got just wonderful reviews and it's just so pretty. So I ordered this to kind of compare it to our other summer fragrances. So some summer fragrances I like to be gardenia, floral. Some I like to be beachy, coconutty, gardenia type scents. And then some summer fragrances I like to be kind of fruity. And so that is what I'm going to be doing soon is a summer fragrance showdown here. But this, I went ahead and tried this morning. I was gonna wait to try it with you guys, but I wanted to get my thoughts together. And, oh, it smells so good. I love fragrances. Okay, it's definitely not really heavy. It's definitely one you can all over. It reminds, my first thought was Dolce Gabbana Light Blue. There's just something in, the, in this that Reminds me of the light blue, which I realize that is like one of the best sellers. So I think a lot of you would like that. And I don't know what the tropical, oh my goodness. Okay, a fearless beach beauty. Oh, Simone. Okay, so that's her name. She's a fearless beach beauty. Tropical frangipani and refreshing watermelon are warmed with the delicate blonde woods. So that is how they describe it. Do I smell watermelon? Okay, it does have a little bit of that in there. I can smell it that now. That must have been how I found this. I must have been looking up watermelon because I love that in different scents. So, this is what I would say so far. I like the one, the Dolce & Gabbana is a little bit more, I don't know, fruity and happy. This is a little bit more fresh. So, if you like more of a fresh, clean scent, then you would like this one better. And the bottle is just gorgeous. So, oh gosh, this is love yourself. It's nice. This is really pretty. I like this. Okay, so going on to something, one of my favorite things to buy, sunglasses. I have purchased uh, several pair of sunglasses from this brand. I think these first ones I actually got from the Reward Style Conference a couple of years ago. They were one of the sponsors and they at our pool party, they had sunglasses on a table and you could grab one pair and I grabbed these and I have loved them and they're so dirty. I have loved them ever since and they are one of their favorite or one of their best sellers. I think it's called the Coco and these are kind of like a tortoise shell but they do have the solid black and they're just fabulous sunglasses. They don't touch my face. They are just made so well. So I've, all, I've loved these for a while now. Oh, I better get this gloss off of my hand. Then I ordered these and I showed you guys, and these are dirty too. And these are similar to the really inexpensive ones that I got from Amazon. Totally different ball game. Okay, these are just so much nicer, but they're more expensive. I think these are right around, most of these are gonna be right around 50, to hundred dollars. I don't think if, I don't know if any of them are a hundred dollars and they're, they're always having good sales and they have this like little wheel you can spin to get a discount. Anyway, these are much nicer than the Amazon. So much nicer that when I got in my car, I didn't even tell you this that day that I showed them to you at first. I have like the heads up display 
for my, you know, everything. Uh, it's how I dial the phone, it's how I do everything. And these are polarized. And I didn't realize it until when I got in the car, you can't see that display because when you have on polarized sunglasses, you can't see that anymore. And I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot. I didn't even know to tell them that these are polarized. So these are just really nice sunglasses. And I know everyone loves the key sunglasses. To me, just these are at least double, twice as nice as the key sunglasses. And just so sturdy, they do not feel like cheap sunglasses at all. So I was going along with my whole loving the black sunglasses. I ordered two pair and um, John got these from the mailbox. It was kind of late because he ended up bringing them into me and we were watching a movie. We were already in the bed watching our Netflix or whatever. And so I tried them on and he loved both of them and they're pretty radical. But here's the first pair. So they're more like, let me boof up my hair some. They're more like, I don't know, like a Hollywood or like old Hollywood style with the round and just real unique. Again, they're polarized. They're so nice. Just, I can't tell you, handcrafted polarized. This is from the Levita collection, both of these pair that I got, but just so pretty. And I was thinking with Mother's Day coming up, this would be a great gift for your children to get you or for you to get your mom or whatever because it's such a good, solid gift, but not so crazy expensive. And then here is the next pair. I wore these the other day, but I don't think I've posted it yet. And these are just, you know, much smaller, but they still have that really cool shape. And what I love about them is you can do this whole thing when you go in the store. They don't have any nose pieces, but yet they don't sit on my cheeks. And just really sturdy. Like, you know, when you take them off, they don't bend all around. They're not wonky. They're just really good sunglasses. So I thought about doing a whole video just on these, but I've been busy doing other things that I, I didn't want to forget to tell you before they, I don't know if they are a special edition collection or whatever. So anyway, and they come in, those two come in a nice case like this too. I wanted to show this to you. This is something else that I got when I placed that Zara order where I got this jacket and the belt, but this is not even listed on there as pajamas. I don't know if it's supposed to be like leisure wear, but is this not gorgeous? This is the top. And then I hope on my phone is picking it up. I think it probably is, but it's kind of like a dark, I would say it's just like so dark brown that it's almost black. And I got medium in both. And then this, these are the bottoms. And so they're just a little bit cropped and they're wide leg. And I mean, is that not the most beautiful set of pajamas? So I got these because I like wearing stuff like this if I have tanned. That way my tanner doesn't get all over my sheets. And gosh, look at, I mean, it's made like clothes. Look at the little dart in the back. So you could, I think you could probably wear this top, definitely. But um, I just wanted to show it to you before they, Zara, their things sell out quick and they do not get it back. They move right along. And look at the nice wide cuff at the bottom. Just so, so pretty. So I am going to feel so chic in my fancy silky pajamas and just a, I'll put a picture up here because I took a picture, but then I thought, is that too crazy to put on Instagram? But I'll put a picture up here of the Soma top. I have loved that so much. I haven't even worn the one that has the lace on the sleeves. I've just been wearing the, if I'm not wearing pajamas because of the tanner. I've worn that other one two or three times and of course John loved it and it does have enough support that if you're like me and you like to sleep in a bralette that has enough support that you don't have to so it's just so flattering to wear with your pajama bottoms. Okay I think that's it. I think I have pretty much told you all the makeup that I have on and um, my earrings are some of my favorites. They are the mini visage, can you imagine them being any bigger than this? But they are. And my ring is the Dean Davidson. This is the blue topaz, but it is in the plaza ring. So if the castle ring is just too big and 
you know, just too much for you, I think that you would love this too. Let me show it to you. It's gorgeous. And that's it. So I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and I will see you back here probably on Monday. Bye-bye.